Chomitsky. And you, when you're in Blacksburg, fans start to say that he's going to become the Frank Beamer of basketball. Those are big words in just four seasons. Well, you win the ACC tournament, that certainly helps. Um, you know what? I like the fact he's wearing a coat and tie, too. We haven't seen a lot of coaches do that after, after the COVID year. Ambling State. Good answer right there by Gordon. So he caught the ball a little bit up the lane, and that gave him some room to turn to that right hand. Padula. Pressure from Cotton. Padula fills it. Bazzilli. I welcome everyone that watched Louisville get a victory. Alongside the G-man, Mike Jaminski, I'm Dean Lincoln. We're at the Castle where Grambling State, a team that's already beat two Power 5 teams, has an early lead. There were two threes followed by a bucket, and that's where we stand. Nice to see that from Kenny Payne's team down in Louisville. Big draft to start the year, but a couple of wins now. Gordon with the three. Well-traveled Gordon, but he has found a home with head coach Dante Jackson now in his sixth season by way of Milwaukee. Jackson is all about the Milwaukee Bucks and everything in the Milwaukee area. Here's a shot from distance. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Finished there by Couture. Just under 40%, uh, which is where he's going to be. I think a couple other guys on the team need to pick up their average sum, but, uh, you know, that, that shot for him just sets up the drive. Couture had 22 season high against William and Mary. Talking about Milwaukee, that the Grambling State logo looks awful lot like the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> no wonder he loves it so much now at Grambling State. And another three as that'll be finished by Coward. And this Grambling State team is not a three-point shooting team, per se. Being five, average five a game, already closing in on that in the early minutes here. It's a five-point lead for the Tigers. Mazzilli trying to get big. Padula. Great pass from Padula as he found Maddox. And he's the guy they've got to get going from three. Really, uh, you know, a big basket last year from that range, but percentage down this year, 27%, but a good confidence builder for him. Coward. Down low, that's a tough shot, and made neatly there by a coup. I tell you what, Cranley State is running their offense very well here early on. They look very comfortable on their end of the floor. Padula deep off the back end of the rim, and a rebound here to the Tigers. Deep early three-point shot for him. Nice little kick out, attacking. Mutz did well to get his hand in there, and I believe it was going to be a backcourt violation. There was a, yeah, Maddox almost pushed Gordon to the ground, though. <laughs> By way of Nigeria, Koo, this is a tough shot, but part of Grambling State's lead, 13-9. Great to be at the Castle Coliseum where Grambling State, the Tigers with the lead. Let's take a look at today's keys to the game brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Let's take a look at uh, Grambling State first and uh, they want to generate turnovers. That's how they generate offense. And uh, this is a, a Virginia Tech team that does not turn it over. But uh, for the Hokies, defend the two. Now I say that, Dean. Grambling State has been really good from three here early on in this game, but that's a little out of character for them. They're normally a two-point scoring team. Grambling State's been good, period. Five for six to start, and they'll get another rebound as Virginia Tech starting this game three for eight from the floor. And that's the first non-three that they've taken in the games. So they need to find a little more balance, work inside out on the offense. Step back, and nailed right there by Coward. Uh, this is as good a start as Dante Jackson could have dialed up here. Coward leads the team in minutes, averaging 11 a game. Padula. Padula had the layup, tried the drop, and a turnover for the Hokies, as you said. No coaches 
happy about turnovers, but Mike Young especially likes to have a high turnover assist ratio. Time for today's starting lineups brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. As you see, Cotton, Kristen, Cowart, Gordon, and Aku, the starting lineup for their head coach, Dante Jackson. And the starting lineup also presented by Toyota for Mike Young's Hokies, Couture, Padula, Maddox, Zilli, and Mutz. Smith. Cotton almost traveled. Looked like he was going to put it up in the air. Turnover. And Virginia Tech was looking for a layup and a little kick right there. It'll stay with the Hokies. And that's the one you don't mind that kick. That saves a layup on the break. What a job Mike Young did at Wofford. And, you know, we've touched on it already, but the transition here. To Virginia Tech, it just feels like he was made to be here. No, no question about it. I mean, this, uh, you know, it, it, he had a home in Wofford, but this, I think, checks all the boxes. Padula has been thinking pass first. He'll shoot this one off the front of the rim, tries to get the rebound, but running with it is Cowart. Quickly the pass and Couture with the foul as Kristen will go to the line. Now, with that long shot, Dean, uh, there wasn't great defensive balance that time. Tigers, a nice break up the floor. What a start for the Tigers. Six for seven, three for three from three. And shooting two. <laughs> Jinx right there. They'll miss the first free throw. Good look at head coach Dante Jackson. Pleasure to talk to at the shoot around this morning. See the numbers on Kristen. 43% from the field. One of three guys on the roster is averaging double figures. This is a team, they're, they're feeling good about themselves, Dean. Three game winning streak, beating Vanderbilt there. You know, for this program to be six and three at this point in the season is good. Best record, I asked Dante Jackson's best record by far he's ever had at this point in the year. In his first season, they won the SWAC regular season. A veteran team with a lot of transfers. Nice move, Virginia Tech. Finished there by Mutz. Yeah, they've looked to him, and when they, I talked about the balance inside, they've looked to him to uh, deliver, get some points, maybe work inside out offensively. Air ball and the Castle crowd letting, yeah, you hear it, air ball as it's a 16 to 11 Grambling State. Watch this Grambling State defense. What they want to do is keep you on the sideline and keep you on the baseline. They don't want to give up any middle drives. Lutz is fouled. Lutz has five already. That's a tough guard, a tough matchup for Kristen inside. You want to try to work at him, get him in some foul trouble. First foul called against Grambling State. Foul going to Kristen. Padula. He will come out of the game. Padula with the inbounds. Down in the corner, Couture. Kid and Mutz both going for it at the same time. Kid taps it over to Mutz. Mutz, you can tell he's feeling it. And he'll go to the line. Well, the thing is, too, I mean, Smith just came into the game, doesn't have a sweat yet. Go right at him, try to make him defend. And so far, I mean, Mutz has been the most reliable option they've had offensively in this game. <laughs> free throw from Mutz. He'll miss it. And an easy choice for today's hardy star to watch. Number 25 for Virginia Tech. Yeah, four double-doubles so far this year. Um, great passer. 3.6 assists out of the post. Um, you see the points, rebounds. A very reliable shooter. He's having a terrific year so far. Preseason All-ACC selection is Mutz, who had 27 in the win over the Tar Heels as Virginia Tech 
already 1 and 0 in the ACC. After this game, it'll be all ACC. Rambling State with a five point lead and a foul on MJ Collins, his first, team second. It really bailed, bailed him out with that foul. It was going to be a tough conversion. Rambling State 16, Virginia Tech 11. But the Pac-12 and the SWAC have entered into an agreement where they're going to play each other. And actually, home and home. So this is a home game for Grambling State. And then the road victory against Vanderbilt, part of their three-game winning streak coming in to this game. So he's, like I said earlier, these guys feeling very good about themselves. Yeah, I felt like, you know, look, shoot rounds can be different, but the mood with Grambling State, the Tigers, they're very confident coming into this one, and it's not easy to play here. We weren't sure about the crowd because the students aren't here. Well, the crowd is here. Yeah, and, uh, and, and they go on, and the, uh, the the road gets a little rougher for them before they go into conference play. they got to go to Wisconsin. And Liberty. Good look at Coach Jackson. Talks about the fact that we'll have more on it, but he spends time with Willis Reed. His health is, uh, we certainly wish Willis the best, but still around the program. Of course, the court, we'll have more on that, is also named after Mr. Reed. I, I just think it's so important for any program to have that sense of history and, and reach back to the players who have been there. Especially when you've got a guy who's in Springfield in the Hall of Fame in World 3. So far, neither team shooting the ball very well from the free throw stripe. And that's a, and now Grambling is, the Grambling State is not a great free throw shooting team, but that is a strength of Virginia Tech. They've got to win that battle today. Turnover for the Hokies, and the Tigers will push it. The little step up. Nice finish. Munford. Munford is in. Good call. Yeah, and uh, why not? Reward yourself. You got the steal. Waited for some help to come down and then pulled up and hit a nice jump shot. Munford, a redshirt junior from Dallas, Texas. Padula's got all three helpers but has not scored yet. Little kick out. Driving to the basket. Floater. Soft rims don't fall there for the Hokies. Lead is seven for the Tigers. Approaching 11 minutes remaining here in the first at Castle Coliseum. Cotton under pressure there from Bazilli. And another three, Gordon. You know, I haven't made one all year. I think I'll go out and shoot a few against Virginia Tech. Unbelievable. I actually talked to him about that at the shoot around and he said I'm starting to get into it as Padula with a nice little runner. And you remember his coach said he wants Gordon to shoot more threes. Well, I, you know, <laughs> it didn't take a coach twice to tell me to shoot the basketball, you know, so you get to, the guy turns on the light. They told you once that you were fired. That was it, that right? That's it. The G-man. Smith contested and blocked there. What a great block from Virginia Tech. Maddox. The Hokies off the block. Maddox had the block and short on the three. The right straight transfer. Vasili with the rebound and then forced it. Right now, Virginia Tech, surprisingly, with the four turnovers, that's not normal. Well, those the, the interior passes, if you don't throw a bounce pass, they're awfully tough to connect. And then I think if he put it on the floor that time, he might have had a chance. See the four turnovers, just three for Coach Jackson's Tigers. Largest lead of the half for Grambling State at eight, trying to add to it. Pace for 80 points right now. They're shooting 73% and 100%. Four for four from three. Gordon! Well, he, is, he is showing uh, a lot of versatility in this game. We've talked about the threes and now being able to go outside, put it on the floor. He had 18 this year against Texas San Antonio. He had 
14 rebounds for a season high. As he goes to the line to shoot two, makes the first. Good foul out against Vandy. So, you know, at this point now, if you're Virginia Tech, you may want to try to attack him a little bit, make him defend. Gordon, a perfect three for three, two for two from three, and two for two from the line. He's in double digits already. Padula. Just scored his first bucket, looking for another one. Contested. Bramley State will go the other way. No passes on that possession. It was just Padula trying to manufacture some offense off the dribble. The lead is 10. Azili. Who forgot the basketball. Good defense there. Yeah, well, nice help that time. Mutz coming over to pick him up. And shot clock. I don't think reset. Good job by the officiating crew. That's Trey Steins. Bill Covington Jr., a familiar face out there with Kellen Milliner, the officials for yeah. this non-conference tilt. Both coaches trying to steal a little talk with their team during that, but the clock getting reset at 24 seconds. So Mike Young's team starting this game shooting 33%, 5 for 15, 3 for 10 from 3. And they'll get the whistle there, the foul going against Munford. Redshirt junior out of Carter High School in Dallas. Actually, they're going to call it on Howard that time. The reach in of four. So Howard will get the whistle. A transfer from Hostra, who leads the Tigers in minutes played per game this season. Trouble on the inbounds. And they'll bring it all the way back. Maddox. Good handle, good step back, and an even better finish for Padula. Yeah, he was slow to get into the scoring column, but he has been very aggressive looking for his own shot the last couple of possessions. Padula, five points and three assists now. Now the crowd started to get into it a little bit. Gordon, the help defense comes. He goes away from it. And air balls it, gets his own rebound, and misses back-to-back -back shots. Virginia Tech, very lucky that time. Uh, Got to stay, hang in there for the rebound. Wow. Stop and pop there from Padula as the two are looking for him. Right now, there is a cover on the basket for the Hokies. But they're looking a lot more active uh, on the offensive glass. They're a little sluggish early in this game. Aku has it ripped. Boy, I thought he fouled Bazzilli. They'll change it. And out of bounds. So when receiving the ball, out of bounds was Kristen. Came on the air talking about Padula. Yes, I'll step back, get behind the line. I'll take the three for the Hokies. Ready, Dad? All charged up. He, he was um, first team all defense. He was the MVP of the All Star, and he was the MVP of the finals. That's checking the boxes. Yeah, you got. You, there's not many other trophies you can walk home with. Well said, from the G-man, who's got to be one of the only people I know that had his jersey retired when he was still playing. That was a tough game for you, wasn't it? Brutal. <laughs> uh, uh, emotionally, I was spent. <laughs> Mutz misses at the basket, and Mutz gets his hands in there. You gotta be careful. We got a foul early. Didn't want to pick up a second cheap one. So Bramley State out there with Cotton, Kristen, Cowart, Smith, and a coup. This is Kristen. Pretty tight rotations for both teams. We're gonna go about eight deep, and that's about it. Cotton. Coup looking for the rebound, but Bazzilli's got it. Padula, who has made a three in 11 of the 12 games played for the Hokies, and he'll go to the line. And he created that. They had a switch. There was a screen up top, and a coup was on him, and uh, 
Padula just made that play, kept going and attacking and attacking until he got the foul. Coming up on the Toyota Halftime Report, we'll have the first half highlights and stats. We'll take a look at highlights from Louisville, Louisville's win over Florida A&M, and we'll also bounce around the ACC scoreboard. Padula now has seven. And he's cut the Tigers lead to five. Walking our way to six minutes and 30 seconds left here in the first. Tigers started six for seven. They are two for their last seven. Ah, that's a rough shot. Oh, denied at the basket. And really, I think he was more denied by the rim than anybody else. And the Hokies fans like it. Does the rim get credit for a block on that play? <laughs> The tour dribbles into trouble. Cross court pass to Padula. Padula really good at using his body with the ball. There's Maddox at the basket. Arms flying, referees letting him play. I like it. Cotton, he really took a bad shot his last time. This time was thinking, I'm going to give it up here. He'll get it back. Good help defense from Maddox. That was enough. And the Hokies take care of business. They'll go the other way. And uh, the, the referee is letting these guys play both ends of the floor. A lot of contact inside. Couture for three. So Bramley State's going to call a timeout after the long distant finish from Couture. Cutting the lead now to two. It was 10 for the Tigers. Good timeout here. And you see, the, this is what Mutz does. I mean, we talked about he was a scoring threat inside. Also a very good passer as well. And uh, here's where the rim went up to about 10 feet, two <laughs> inches. Uh, it was a good aggressive take. A lot of times you'll get the call in that situation, but uh, the referee said play on. But, uh, you know, for, uh, for Dante Jackson, a good time out there. They had that good lead. He wants to try to, you know, take the crowd out of it a little bit in this game, preserve that lead, get a good possession here. See Jackson, and he knows he's got to keep an eye on Hunter Couture, the man who just made that three. Boy, he was so great at the ACC tournament, the MVP of the ACC tournament. He lit it up. Yeah, that was, uh, they Mike Young wins another one of those. He may get a street named after him around here like Coach Beamer has. His like being well said. The first seven seed to ever win the ACC tournament, ever. Shot clock down to four. Cotton has had to take some tough shots. Good defense from Padula. Yeah, no, that was just solid. The first, that was 28 good seconds of defense by Virginia Tech forcing that tough shot. Mutz will get it back to Kidd. Four passes outside of the three-point line. Now Padula, good little drop, using the rim for protection. Kids got two. That was two on four basketball against Grambling State, but uh, man, as uh, Couture stepped up, great pass. That 10-point lead wiped away by a 10-0 run from the Hokies, and the Castle Coliseum getting behind the home team here. Off to one of their best starts in history. Try to go 11 and 1 before they begin real ACC play. As I mentioned, they already have that one win over North Carolina. Yeah, here's the look. You see, he draw, look at all the attention. The fake staying underneath. You got he occupied three guys by himself on that play. Lynn Kidd, the junior from Gainesville, Florida, the transfer from Clemson. Good job using the rim. Go ahead, Mike. No, I'm just saying that this that lead has evaporated. Gordon was off the floor for most of that. I'm trying to figure out why he wasn't in any foul trouble. He was by far their best offensive player. 
See the two fouls now on Couture. We have to keep an eye on number zero for the Hokies. And with those two fouls, Couture has gone to Mike Young's bench. And he, Mike Young will stick with guys with two fouls, too. But That's how you finish. Well, I'll tell you what, Lynn Kidd has been really good in this game. A little high-low action that time, and uh, he is very athletic in the low post. The Hokies led it 2-0. Now this is their first lead again, 25-23. Where Virginia Tech were down by 10. They've used a 12-0 run to take only their second lead of the game. The only other time they led, as we mentioned, going to break was the first bucket of the game, Mike. So Kidd, you see his numbers on the season, really efficient. And, you know, the thing is picked up, too, for Virginia Tech team is on the defensive end of the floor that uh, I thought Grambling was very comfortable in the first eight minutes of the game, and uh, things have gotten a lot stingier down there. Well, and adding to that, G-Man, is we mentioned the four turnovers a long, long time ago. They have not had a turnover since. Travel. And that's a turnover for Grambling State. That's their seven. Well, and the thing that's that's helping now, Virginia Tech, they've got some depth inside. Last year, really, really thin. But for a guy like Gordon, they can run a few different bodies at him. Got a few fouls to waste, but that was really good defense by Kidd. Grambling State, their last field goal came at 10:49. We're at 3:12 remaining. Padula, wow, that's pretty. Well, you notice that a lot of their shots are coming on cross-court passes, and that's just the best way to combat this defense and where they want to send you. So Padula now has 10 to lead the Hokies. Double-digit scoring machine for number three. Well, he didn't score for the first six or seven minutes of the game. Yeah, he was thinking pass first. Padula, kid. Kid, I almost thought he took an extra step there, but he got fouled. Well, I don't know that, you know, it turned out okay, but that wasn't the best place for uh, him to deliver the ball to this big guy. See right there, a lot of bodies around. You don't want to have him put the ball on the floor. Look at that great pass out of the post. The young guys don't make that one. And, you know, that's one a skill they learn late. Kid, I mean, he only, you know, he's, he's a junior, but he only played 10 games last year. So, I can almost say that he's almost a sophomore developmentally. Today's his 21st birthday. They sung happy birthday here at Castle Coliseum. I wasn't sure if it was your birthday or not, G Man. I had to focus. I'm a Leo, brother. <laughs> August 3rd. There you go. I could remember that, too. <laughs> 16-0 run here. Oh, flushed on the rebound right there. What a finish from Malik Lehman. Nobody getting a body on him, and that's the most, that's the friendliest bounce that the Tigers have gotten in the last 10 minutes. Ending the 6-0 run with that dunk on the far side off the Gordon miss, as Gordon has missed three in a row. Padula forcing it. Lehman's a nice help that time defensively. Makes the steal. Three-pointer ripped down by the Hokies. That was MJ Collins on the shot for the Tigers. Mutz, yes. And Mike Young off that three-pointer. Caught a quick timeout. 32 to 25. Preseason all ACC for a reason. Yeah, and that uh, that, that three-point shot percentage has really slammed up. You ever see the Tigers climbing on the offensive glass? The one bright spot they've had in the last five minutes.
top man for the Hokies. 90 seconds remaining here in the first. At one point, Grambling State held a 10-point lead. Now they find themselves down seven. The only time this year Virginia Tech's been down at the half is the only loss of the season. They were down five at the half against the College of Charleston. Another turnover. And you see Coach Jackson try to cheer on his team. I'll tell you what, Pat Kelsey's doing a terrific job at College of Charleston. And talk about this. That was a good experience for this Tech team. One true road game that they'll play before they start conference play uh, at BC. Or restart conference play, I should say. Kind of a funky time of the year. And, you know, with Chris, we got the Christmas break coming up. They're done with exams right now, so they've got two road games in, in league. Oteep with the outlet pass. Now the rebound brings that muscle off the bench. You talked about their depth, particularly at the post. Oteep is a part of that. Padula was still wide open, but they didn't need him as the finish coming from MJ Collins. That's a, you know, we haven't even, we haven't said Poteet's name a lot. He's he just getting into the game, latter stages of the first half, but having an impact. Elijah Poteet, the junior from Reedsville, North Carolina, transfer from Rice. Season high this year in the opening game, nine against Delaware State. In that same game, another guy we haven't said much about, Grant Bazilli, had 30. The transfer from Wright State. That's a good way to make your debut. Yeah, hey guys, I'm here. I'm, <laughs> you remember my name. There he is sitting on the on the sideline. Is that a uh, rough start offensively? 0 of 2 is not scored. Three rebounds, though. Final seconds. Ooh. Maddox. Well, I mean, you look at it, and Virginia Tech had a couple of fouls to burn, so they don't put Gramley State at the line right here. Now you got 11 seconds on your back to try to manufacture a shot. Let's see if that uh, that pays off for them. Yeah, that was the plan. Here's Coward. Boutique. Did well to get out and help. And that'll do it. After trailing by 10 at the halftime, Mike, it's Virginia Tech 34, Grambling State 25. Yeah, no panic. I mean, they, you know, they, the Grambling State was really shooting the ball extraordinarily well, but uh, good bounce back by the Hokies. The afternoon has been fabulous. Same starters that started the game will start the second half. Grambling State again in the dark uniforms, Virginia Tech in their home white uniforms. Cotton, Kristen, Gordon, Cowart, and Aku starting for Coach Jackson and the Tigers. Couture, Padula, Malik, Maddox, Bazilli, and Mutz out there, and that's Mutz. Well done by Mutz. Offensive foul. Just knew the drive gets to the right. Just yeah, what, what happened to you see the little dip of the shoulder right there. Gordon now picks up his first foul. Not a ton of whistles in that first half, as you talked about, Mike Jaminski. They're letting him play. And that's, you know, and all you want from the officials is consistency. And they let both teams play. Fair whistle on both ends of the court. Padula saving it behind the back pass. Maddox, Padula again. And you talked about getting the transfer from Wright State rolling and finishing it there was Bazilli. Just moving around the basketball, good finish after that save, cutting down the lane. The first bucket for the transfer from Wright State. Never got to play Dayton when he was at Wright State. Played Dayton this year and had a massive game. The tour with those two fouls. Every game this season, Padula has been in double figures. Couture off the front of the rim, and Couture now two for four from the floor. Now they're going to get Gordon again. Here's the look, and it almost looked like that save was for nothing, but then you'll see the, watch the cut right down the lane there. Good find and finish. And then on the other end of the floor that uh, Gordon is second foul in as many possessions 
with the wraparound. Didn't really need that. Gordon made his first three baskets of the game, including two from downtown. Couture misses. Couture now two for five from three. Good defense under the basket. Pazilli, Padula. Coward getting up in the air. Not a good decision there. Pazilli, backside of the backboard with the finish. Amazing what happens. Like you, you feel like you've forgotten how to score. You don't score in the first half, and then you get a basket, and things open up for you now. Yeah, so well said. Missed his only two shots in the first half, has made both in the second. Here's Gordon. Gordon's got those two fouls. Got to be careful. Lowers his shoulder again, forces the shot. Excellent work as it's finished there by Christie. Yeah, Christie, nobody got a body on him. And it's an interesting thing, early in the game, they were coming and double teaming Gordon, but they're letting Mutz play him straight up now. Maddox misses. Seven Virginia Tech Hokies have scored a point for Mike Young. Howard breaking some ankles out there. I think Padula really just slipped. It's going to stay with Grambling State. I liked your comments about what Coach Jackson was probably saying at the half, but man, he's got to be feeling a little bit. They were up by 10, Mike, feeling it, and then all of a sudden, Virginia Tech put the clamps down. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, no easy points. And, you know, the way you can extend your off or your defense is to be more efficient on this end of the floor. This time, Gordon earns the whistle against Mutz. Those two are going at it. It's his second first team foul against Virginia Second on Mutz. Backcourt, 15 seconds on the shot clock. Cotton fade away. Well, his shot selection is pretty random, but he makes that one. Yeah, his first one of his first made field goal of the game, but that's a pretty nice step back. Look, uh, that one looked more under control than some of his other shots in the first half. His coach has known him a long time as Cotton is from Milwaukee. And that's of the ties that Coach Jackson has to the state of Wisconsin. Brazili goes strong, he'll go to the line, and I think that might be three now. Let's see who they give that to. Yeah, that's three on Gordon. Well, and the thing is, too, that two of those three have been offensive fouls in this, in this half. Number 21. With four points now, all coming in the second half. I mentioned that game against Dayton. He had 23 and 10 rebounds. He made 39 threes last year, and he's got 26 already. And 25, Justin Mutz. That's his third personal foul. Double technical. I think it's just the frustration of this whole thing for Gordon and. Uh, Dante Jackson is having a long conversation with him, but unfortunately, that technical foul is forced. Yeah, that's all four of those coming here, and just in the first opening minutes here of the second half. And the thing too is he was so dominant early in this game. Looks like he was on his way to a 20-point afternoon. Well, and he was kind of feeding off the away crowd as well. Down a couple of threes. The lead is ten. Gordon on the bench with four. Boy, that technical, double technical. That is not going to make the coach happy as Kid rips it out of the air on his birthday. A lot of the passing of the ball by Grambling State right now. A lot of one-on-one -on -one things off the dribble. Kid, the tour, the doula. 
a really nice passing on that game. He started inside, you know, get the touch inside, and then work out for that three. 13 to lead all players for Padula. And you said it, Mike, nice extra pass from the tour. Those are the two players you started the show with, those two involved in that last one. Cotton misses everything. Kept alive, though. The Tigers stay with it and finished by Smith. Kid was reluctant to go after the ball, and, they, you know, he was going to let it go out of bounds. And you never want to make the referees make that call. If you can get the ball, get it. Collins, Bazzilli, kid wide open at the elbow, money. Right, that, you know, this is just such an unselfish team, and that was a great find by Basili. He got uh, jammed by the defense. Kid left timeout. open, he knocks the shot down. I think a good timeout here for Coach Jackson, especially with Gordon Dow Padula making threes, 44-31, hopeless. Basketball is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. By Works Nitro. Available at worksnitro.com. And by the Fresh Market. Voted number one best supermarket in America. 44-31 Virginia Tech seeking their first 11-1 start to a season since 2018-19. That year Tech opened with a 14-1 ledger through its first 15 games. Mike Young saw his team get down 10 in the first half, but since then it's been all hopeless. Yeah, you know, defensive end is picked up for him. Grambling State really nothing easy. And, uh, and just the, uh, you know, with Basili not being a part of the offense in the first half and the travel right there. That is the 14th turnover of the game for the Tigers. Coach Jackson, that says it all. They trail the Hokies 44-31. It's bow time. Hard to wrap. Easy to give. From big presents to stocking stuffers, the Steel Holiday Gift Guide has something for everyone. Find yours at steelusa.com slash gift guide. It's bow time. Some folks say don't call it a comeback. But when the sizzling, savory pork chop griller's back for a limited time in all its tender, marinated glory, go ahead, call it a comeback. It's bow time. Zaxby's, the official chicken of Valley Sports South and Southeast. Second half at the Castle, Virginia Tech 44, Grambling State 31. Stay tuned for the fast break presented by your local Ford dealer. Padula, really good day, four for 10. You know, it's funny, there's that, there's that Grambling State, that's their logo, and uh, Packers right there, and uh, it's been a tough second half for that man right there. Mr. Gordon, four fouls, one of those technical, two of those offensive. Padula. Padula way downtown, yes. And Padula now with 16. Right about his average. Season high 22 and career high this year against William and Mary for Padula. As he and Couture. Fifth foul is called number one, Cameron Christian for Grandin State. Christian, personal foul. third personal foul. Remember, foul. Gordon That's on the, the bench with four. That play is in the review.
Wasn't a great look, but they felt like that elbow was up high enough. So Couture uh, with the upgrade. This is uh, the, this the, is the first. Yeah, the one area in uh, Virginia Tech, four of ten from the free throw line. Normally a very good free throw shooting team. Couture does make the second one. There's Kristen. As you saw that one upgraded to the two shot technicals. Virginia Tech makes one of them. And it's 48 to 31. Another 6 0 run right now for the Hokies. And that's coming in just 47 seconds. They've got the ball again. Zilly. Couture. Collins forces it. Well, just Collins over dribbling on that possession. A little too much dribble himself into a turnover. Kristen still out there. There's Kristen. A little floater. It'll go out of bounds off the Tigers and back to the Hokies. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you look at the offense for Grambling State, and it's just been, you know, whoever's getting the ball, putting their head down, trying to make something happen on their own. Coach Jackson looking on. The Hokies, led by Coach Young, have the tour of Collins, Padula, Kidd, and Bazzilli. Bazzilli with it, top of the key. And he's a good enough three-point shooter. He's got to honor him out there, and that just opens things up inside. Now, Kidd is not a threat out there, so they're, gonna, they're operating high-low with him down in the low block. Virginia Tech called for the offensive foul. Out of bounds. My apologies, out of bounds. Near side. Well, this, this half has been kind of the opposite of the first half as far as calls are concerned. Uh, they, they let both teams play, and uh, it's been a real tight whistle in the second half. Excellent point. If you see Gordon still on the bench with those four fouls, he was feeling it early. Howard oh, this, this might have hit a sliver of the rim, Mike. I'm not sure. Still fits the air ball call, though. Padula. Why not? Staying with it is Kid. Great pass, Bazzilli. Kid with the assist. Nice work inside. Look at the interior passing between the big men. Kid with two helpers to go with his seven points. Bazzilli now with seven as well. Smith with that left hand strokes it from three. Finally, a three point shot opens up for Tigers. They made their first four. They haven't made one since that one. Yeah, was the, that was the first one of this half. What a great game for Padula. Five for 11. Five assists, three rebounds. Yeah, here's here's the look. Almost uh, getting away with it, but makes up for it with the helper. You can feel confident, continent. 16. Now with 11:57 remaining in the game, it's Virginia Tech 50, Grambling State 34. As you take a look at the next five games, it's time for ACC basketball. Yeah, and so it starts. We talked about it a little bit of a tough time of the year with uh, going home for Christmas around B.C. and then Wake Forest on New Year's Day night. But uh, this was an impressive start to their year, and uh, Mr. Mutz really dominated this game for Virginia Tech. Terrific night for him. Great win. This really started a uh, little bit of a slide for North Carolina, 7-0, and they they lost four in a row and in a tough game today with Ohio State. Yeah, you said it, Mutz 27 in that win against UNC. MJ Collins also had eight points, eight rebounds, and three assists. That was when you started to see the depth that you've been talking a lot about, Mike, as it relates to Coach Young and Virginia Tech. Wait, and you look at this team, you know, this game, and again, tight rotation. It's going to be eight guys barring injury the rest of the year, probably. And seven of those guys have scored in this game. And Poteet, 
has done other things even though he hasn't scratched. Padula missed the first. Came back with a couple errors. Turned into another big game. That's what he does now for Virginia Tech. Big game after big game. In many ways, Mike, he makes it look easy. Pretty good line, too. I mean, five assists, three rebounds to go along with the scoring. Smith, challenge at the rim. Tremendous help defense by Vazili. Padula attacking the basket, and he'll go back to the line. Well, one thing on the rush up the floor, you've got to stop the guy with the ball with the live dribble, and nobody from Grambling State did that, and Padula recognizing it and going all the way. Stop me, stop me. No, all right, I'll just go up and try to score. I'm going to draw the foul. Good, smart play. Two fouls now, number 23, Quinton Morell. Padula makes the first, has one more. That's the second as he was one away from 20. Fifty-three to thirty-four. Well, this game would be over over if they had made their free throws. Eight of sixteen. Coach Young might bring that up. That's the thing. You know, in games like this, you can have those tough coaching moments with a win. That's the best of all worlds. Well, Zilly got his hands in there late. I think. Yeah, they're gonna call it against number 21, the transfer from Wright State. It's gonna be interesting to see him make his run through the ACC. You know, you think about last year, what Manic did for North Carolina. Vasily could be that kind of player. Well, and you look at you look at the transfer, the big transfers for the schools like Pete Nance at North Carolina or Vanderplas at Virginia. So here, that that four guy, that stretch four guy. Trying to incorporate in a team that has a lot of people back. Oh, it's great to be alongside Mike Jaminski here at the Castle Coliseum where they are still making noise. As we mentioned, the students are done with exams at home, but still they're loving the Hokies. Yeah, and you know, and Mike Young said that to us. Is is Basile Kebe Aluma? No, but he's got a different skill set and he does some pretty good things on the floor for you. You're not gonna you know, you're not going to find a clone of these guys from the from you know last year. Yeah, Luma so good as well in that run to that ACC tournament title. Ralph outlet pass. Collins tracking back will go off of Collins. Coach Jackson liked that pass, but goes out of bounds. Yeah, it's, and that was a great point by you. The freshman chasing that play down from behind, not giving up on it, gets the deflection. Petit, you know, we talked about it, hadn't scored, but uh, doing other things. Elijah Petit, number 34, wants it. Yeah. So much for the not scoring. Good to see that. See, that's what Basile can give you, that high-low presence inside, especially with Kidd and Petit. They're inside players. Let them work. And the G-man asks for points. Petit delivers, hits the boards. They share it. Basile will rip it down. Padula bounce pass. They were going to try to get another dunk. There's a look, a good seal right there at the late front, and uh, that's just an easy basket. Good luck. Season high in the opening game for Petit. His career high when he played at Rice, he had 18 against UAB. And see, with that, you know, when you got guys out there with three point shooters and the floor is spread, that high low action really is it's an easy pass. Good fake from Couture, cross court pass. Collins will give it back to Couture. He's open. And nails. You just know that that weak side corner shooter is going to be there for Virginia Tech.
Look at this. Things close up for you. You got that guy right in your hip pocket. That was a beautiful delivery. Tour, all seven of his shots have been from behind the three-point line. He's made three. He's got ten in the game. Cotton. Good double team. Denied at the basket. Mutz. Mutz and Kid. Now Mutz. Good little spin. Picked up by Kit. Oh, good cut from Collins. Missed him, though, so he'll come back and get it. Mutz. Under the rim. Shot clock back at 20. Couture now. He checked. Four for eight for three. It's not quite the same threat with Mutz, although we did talk about his three-point shooting, but uh, takes the play work, especially, you know, you get the, the second-chance opportunity there. 199 career threes made for number zero. Couture, good extra passing right there for the Hokies. You know, I, I said it at the top, and it's funny, Mike Young said when Couture came to the, here, he couldn't guard Mike Young. And that's the, you know, he's always been the defensive threat. There's that recycle. You see everybody scattered. He gets a great look at it. But, you know, that, that part of his game is always going to be there. It's on the other end of the floor that he's really made big strides. So he's at 199. The career record for threes made is 267. He has one more year left because of the COVID situation. I feel like it's not a stretch to say he's going to chase that down. Yeah, he can, uh, you know, you, you still got, you know, two-thirds of this year left. You know, so I, I think he's probably got another 50 in him this year at least. There you go. So Grambling State back out there with Cotton, Kristen. Gordon has come back into the game. He's got the ball. Coward and Phillips. Gordon wants it. Mutz did a good job of fronting Gordon and then off that pressure. The Hokies stay with it and then the finish. That's just all out hustle. That'll be the play that Coach Young will remember too. Boy, terrific job by Maddox just uh, staying with the play and not only you know getting the deflection he got on the floor and it's just good hustle five points for Maddox but as you say the hustle part of this 10-0 run in the last 154 and I mentioned that'll be the play that he'll remember I mean he was pumping his fists and clamping he loved it Mike Young and you see, that's how you see, you see the, the jacket's off now. The sleeves are rolled up, and uh, the top button on the shirt on button. Mike Young is coaching now. He's into the game. For me, it started with his popcorn, though, right? Yeah, every, every game. <laughs> Good defense from Mutz on Gordon a minute ago, and Gordon gives it up and finish there for Christian. that 10-0 run. Virginia Tech 17 forced turnovers a season high. And the Hokies cruising here 63-38. Seven remaining in the game. It's been a dominant performance here from Virginia Tech once that they got through that early run from the Tigers 63 to 38. And make a correction that North Carolina game not over yet. Uh, North Carolina three point lead to 17 seconds to go in that game. Thank you G man. Well, that one not done. Uh, the Buckeyes and the Tar Heels. Virginia Tech, as we mentioned earlier, they'll start the ACC season. You know, again, they have that win over North Carolina, but they'll go on the road at Boston College and Wake Forest on the 21st and the 31st. This free throw, Bramley State. Cotton going to push it. Oh, missed at the bucket there by Grambling State, as that was Phillips. Oh, 
Mutz gets it down low to Kidd. And they travel for Mutz. Good little happy feet out front. But this is, you know, and, and with that rotation, especially with the bigs inside, that uh, Mike Young can try different combinations and see how things work. You know, Kid getting a little bit extra run now. It's going to serve him well as ACC season starts. Anuj. Good defense from the tour. Tristan, back of the rim. A foul down on the floor. That'll go against Kidd. That's his first. That's his first. Foul in the half. First team foul in the half. Oh, good cut. What a great cut and a beautiful pass. Tristan finishing the pass from Gordon. With him off the block, things opened up inside. They were, they were cutting lanes, and uh, that was a nice combination. Six thirty remaining in the game. Collins, kid, travel yeah, with the spin. Took an extra step. I feel like he was thinking about a big old nasty dunk right there. <laughs> You know, and, and I like this by Dante Jackson that when uh, when Gordon picked up that tee, you know, he had a long talk with him over on the bench and got him calmed down and, uh, you know, let him come back into this game, see what he can do down the stretch, see how, he can, how long he can last without getting that fifth foul, but try to re-enter the game. Tristan. Another three miss there for Grambling State. They started so hot, four for four, then now five for 15 from three. If you remember, Mike, Virginia Tech started cold from three, and it's been the opposite. Well, and the thing, too, aside from a couple of foul, you know, foul baskets, follow up baskets, not a lot of easy looks at all for Grambling State. None. Air ball. So the Tigers will push it here. But still, I mean, even with that air ball, good defensive uh, rotation back by Virginia Tech, stop that rush up the floor. Gordon, it's fair to say when he got his fourth, three, and then the double technical, which counted as his fourth, it was kind of good night for the Tigers. Yeah, and, you know, but Cotton, he gets that look because of the defense that's drawn into Gordon inside. He just, he didn't knock the shot down, but he got a great look. All right, final. North Carolina did beat Ohio State 84 as Mutz at the basket. Strong. That was on the Tigers, 22. Just a look. You talk about the high post, and that's the thing I think you want to encourage him to shoot out on the perimeter. So I'd give him a little bit of room, make him beat you over the top. So just one here. The and one for number 25, Mutz. Bounces around, hit about every part of the rim and backboard and in. So Mutz will get a break and high fives from everybody on the Hokies bench. Three players now in double figures for the Hokies. This is Mutz. Final season with the Hokies. That's a really nice drive, but missing, just not falling right now for the Tigers. So Padula will push it. He's not afraid to go the distance. Said to lob it. Oh, Collins with the slam. Nice easy basket for the freshman to get, and the run up the floor. Padula. Doing it all right now, feeling the pressure from beyond. Oh, switched it. Missed it with his left. Switched his hands in the air, going the other way. Gordon going to try to rock one, and he does. Gordon was late coming down on the play. He never got over half court, so an easy cherry pick for him. <laughs> First two points of the half for Gordon. That's five fouls on Gordon. Padula 
running the show. You got to step out on them. And then Collins with the finish, and the Hokies love it. Collins at the basket. And you know, and his his run, he had a second run up the floor. He's just looking at Padula and pointing up to the rim. Please, another one. Throw it up there. I'll go get it. Look, they're chatting right now. That's a real coaching moment right there. I'm guessing it was something along the lines like, we've got incredible talent. We've got to make sure you keep it together all the time. Yeah, and it's, but again, it's, you know, he's he's used to having his running mate out there, Hunter Couture, and uh, now you got a guy who's really athletic. Not that Couture isn't, but uh, Collins running the floor that you can do that. You know, he's going to he's gonna be looking for lobs on the break. Meanwhile, Padula at 21, his third 20-point-plus game of the season, a season that has seen him score double digits in every single game. And he might be the most improved player in the ACC, which is saying a lot. And there he is, Padula finding Collins, and the Hokies are rolling in Blacksburg, 70-42. to 42. Game of offensive fouls. Look at the pretty numbers. Good, yeah, pretty good line right there <laughs> across the board. First 25 and 5 game of his career. And he sits down one shy of his career high in points, which is 22. He's at 21. He's like, Coach, come on, man. <laughs> one shy. Leave me in there. One more basket. Who with an easy dunk? Bucket is now Mike Young will start to go deep to his bench. Into the game is Camden. Camden right there with the pass. A redshirt freshman out of Downington, GA. Transfer from Memphis as they try to get it to Camden Johnson, a sophomore. And a whistle on the floor well before the shot. That's on Virginia Tech's number 10, Camden Johnson. That's his first 15 pound of the half. So Camden Johnson wearing number 10, the sophomore, in with John Camden. Spelled exactly the same way. The redshirt freshman. They wear 10 and 11 respectively. You know, it's, it's, you look at, I, I tend to look at, you know, in shoot rounds and pregame and warm ups and uh, this Virginia Tech team really on the same page. You know, it just looked like they're really a together group. You know, I did, we talked to Mike Young, he loves this team. A lot of coaches don't come flat out and say that, but they just feel like a really good vibe with this group. Oh, you nailed it. That was the first thing out of his mouth today as he walked down these steep steps here as Maddox. It's a tough shot. And my dog looking back. Wow, we got that too? <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's exactly the kind of look he gave right there as we're now under three minutes. Dante Jackson also starting to go to his bench. Smith. Shot clock at five. Coon. That's a good shot. He's got six, comes in averaging just two points a game. Cabinet. Big man, number 34, with a nice soft touch right there. Poteet. He's got, he got prime position inside, used his body well. T and Aku doing a little bit of talking in the paint. As they match buckets. Under two minutes remaining. Two big bodies out there. Back of the rim. T with the rebound. So T with four points and a couple of rebounds. Extra pass to Maddox. The crowd will love it if this goes in front of the rim. 
They're just missing there for John Camden, the redshirt freshman. Grambling State, as we mentioned, came in with those two power five wins, and that's a power move to the basket. Well, Jackson will call timeout, but finish from Quentin Muriel, the sophomore from Milwaukee. Yeah, it's just to get, uh, get some players out onto the floor. Big day for Mr. Padula. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the big day with a, a late start, letting everybody kind of work into the offense. He didn't score for a stretch in that first half. But uh, then once uh, he knocked down their first three, no looking back for him. How about that alley -oop pass that he had as well. And you feel like his play created that space for Collins. Ward. And Ward actually stepped out of bounds. That would have been his first three. Michael Ward, the freshman from Bethesda, Maryland, Walt Whitman High School. They were going to go crazy. <laughs> they kind of did anyway. You know what? The great thing is that, you know, all the guys on the bench are, are really pulling for, for the guys out on the floor right now to score. You know, do something, do something well. You know, come ACC play, they may not see a lot of court time. Oh, the crowd loves it. Taking yeah. the charge right there, number 14, <laughs> Owen. Doyot. And how, about, how about Mike Young up giving him a little standing ovation? <laughs> That's awesome. A big smile from Doyot as he walked back over in front of Coach Young. So only about a two-second differential here. At the end of game clock and the shot clock. Camden. Boutique. Clock from behind. Pump fake, but missing at the bucket. Final seconds counting down. Rell with a nice move, and now we got 1.2 seconds as Virginia Tech and Mike Young will move to 11 and one. Yeah, nice, and uh, you know you, you get a you get a good easy home win here. Nobody gets hurt. Get yourself in a good rhythm for ACC play. Mike Young's Hokies 11 and 1. Your final score for the number 24 team in the country, Virginia Tech 74, Grambling State 48. And the thing too, I mean, it, it was you know what what got them going was the defensive end of the floor. Their intensity picked up. You know, Grambling came in here. Grambling State came in first.